I'd say this calls for a celebration. No, uh, Becky, you're going home to rest. Oh, come on, Amber, it's early. No, I think Amber's right. You're a single working mom and you need your rest. But this is such a glorious day. I mean, you and Amber are friends again. Do you know how many prayers I've sent to God for this very thing? Yeah, right. You heard Mama, didn't you? What's going on here? Nothing, Becky. No. No, I can tell. Miss Forrester, is there something that you want to tell me? What's all this? Mr. Forrester told me to bring these up here. Oh. They arrived from International. Must be from Ridge and Morgan. Mm hmm And I'm supposed to give you this note. Back by tomorrow? He's got to be kidding. These things need to be categorized and sorted. Where's Thorne? He said he'd be up to help. Great. Thanks, Greg. You got it. No, you're not buying this, are you? I don't know what to think. All I know is that Eric said that Thorne was on the rebound. And that his proposal was just some sort of knee-jerk reaction. Oh, Kimberly, and they were... They were not speculating either. They were certain that Thorne never meant to marry me. Stop it. Just stop thinking about that. Hey. Hi. Oh, there they are. What's up? Well, how does uh, roast duck with plum sauce sound? Ah, I'd say it sounds pretty good. <laughs> Want me to pour you a glass of wine? Honey, I would love to, but I've got to get back to work. I just came by to get these inventory sheets. You have to go back to work? Are you kidding? Yeah. Why? We got a shipment in from Paris, and it's a turnaround. We've got to get it done by tomorrow. <sighs> But the sooner I get there, the sooner I get back here. Okay. But you be back here sharply at 7. Okay, I'm putting a lot of work into this dinner. Hmm. Would I disappoint you? Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mmm. You know what? Mm. I'll be back by 6 for appetizers like that. <laughs> okay. Mm. Mm. All right, honey. I'll All see right. you later. I hope I haven't stepped out of line asking you for help. Would you stop it? It's okay. So you're serious? You're gonna really help me? Are we friends or not? Thank you so much. So where do we start? Hmm. Well, I'm thinking that we could get you a membership at the country club. Believe it or not, there are tons of good-looking, eligible bachelors walking around just practically trolling the place every day looking for a future mate. Taylor, I just told you I'm not interested in a mate. Yeah, but you also told me that you want to have your own yes, child. Yes, I need a man to have a baby, but I, I definitely don't want a husband. to tell me? Yes, there is. Oh, no. 
I am so sorry. I just assumed since the two of you were here together that things were all patched up. <sighs> Look, I know that I'm not as smart as either of you two are, but I do have something to say. What's that, cuz? If you hold a grudge and you refuse to forgive, then you're only hurting yourself so much more than the person you're angry with. I've only learned this myself in the last few weeks. In fact, for the first time in my life, I'm really starting to live. <laughs> Can you believe that? I am 19 years old, and I wake up every morning smiling like I've never smiled before. It's because of this beautiful baby boy, and because of this wonderful guy that I'm in love with. And he was the one who taught me how to forgive. It's made all the difference in the world. So I'm begging you, Mrs. Forrester. Don't waste another moment or another day of your precious life holding a grudge against my cousin. Yes, what she did to your family, it, it was wrong. In fact, it was horrible. But you have to understand, she was a different person then. She was scared and she was insecure. And now she is strong and courageous. She has so much confidence. And I know, because I depend on her every day. I love this girl like a sister. I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for her. Yes, I can see that. I've already forgiven Amber, so... But that's not what I want to talk to you about. It wasn't? No. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and you just let me go on and on like no, that? No, no, no. Obviously, it was something that I... I needed to hear and you needed to say. So then, what was it? I'm concerned about you. About me? Why? I think you're pushing yourself too much. Was, was that all? No. This is a very serious conversation. Until you feel stronger, I don't want you going into the office and working long hours. Oh. No. I've made a decision. I'm going to tell Eric this. We're going to keep you on salary. You're going to get your regular paycheck every week so you don't have to worry about that, all right? And I want you to take the baby. I want you to go home, take care of yourself, and rest. Are you OK to drive? I'm not that tired, Miss Forrester. I just want to say I think you're pretty terrific, Mrs. Forrester. Well, don't tell anybody. You'll ruin my reputation. It's our secret. I'll see you at home, cuz. Bye. Goodbye, Becky. dinner production just for the two of you yeah well I wanted to do something nice for Thorne I see listen Kimberly um, about that phone conversation that I overheard the other day I want you to forget that it ever happened okay I certainly have Brooke is not a problem for us and I am not going to let her become one Man, those two accomplished a lot in Paris. More than I gave them credit for. Well, let's get to it. I've got to get home for dinner by 7. Wow. Well, guess we better move fast then, huh?
I'll finish up. Brooke, you'll be here all night. You have a dinner appointment. I think we are right on schedule. Mm, am I gonna have to go through all this for my husband? <laughs> it's a labor of love. Oh, honey. it is, is it? <laughs> yep. I don't think there's anything I wouldn't do for that man. Well, I'm sure that Thorne feels the same exact way for you. Yeah, I'm sure he does. So, what are you gonna wear tonight? Oh, I don't know. You know, as little as possible, probably. <laughs> oh. Which reminds me, I've gotta get ready to take a shower. Well, do you want me to finish up? No, no, I can handle it. Are you sure? I am positive. You go home, here's your purse. Okay. Thanks for helping. Well, you have fun tonight. I will. Macy, I'm so happy for you. And you're okay, right? I am fine. You know, I think I needed that little dose of insecurity. Things are going so well, it makes me appreciate what I have. Well, there's one thing for sure. You don't have to question the way that Thorn feels for you. Now you have fun tonight. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, now, you, you say that you don't want a husband. I thought I made myself perfectly clear. I want a baby, just a baby. Yeah, but what if we could just toss one in in the process? Taylor, <laughs> if there was a man out there, I would have found him by now, but there isn't. I mean... There hasn't been a man since... Since Ridge? I guess my standards are pretty high. I'll say. Look, all I'm trying to say is that I've played the dating game and I'm finished. If I were to wait for Mr. Wright, I'd be waiting forever and I would never have a child. Yeah, but Morgan, to try to raise a child outside of a marriage... I mean, what are you gonna do? What, you're gonna just go into a bar and pick up some stranger? Well, I'd be cautious, of course. Morgan, that is a scary idea. Yeah, well, what else am I supposed to do? I, I don't know. Try the old-fashioned way. You meet a man, you fall in love. Will you, you stop know? saying that? That's not going to happen. Don't you think that I would love to have a husband like yours? I mean, don't you think that I think about that every day? But I have accepted the fact that that's not in my card, so please don't try to convince me that it is. Okay. You know, I hear you. I got what you're saying. You're determined to have a child. But I, I, I just can't tell you how opposed I am to you just going in a bar and picking up some stranger to get you pregnant. However, there is another way. Thank you. I just can't believe there isn't some treatment. I mean, if we can't get it in here in Los Angeles, then let's fly her to New York. The doctor explained it to me. She has stage four pancreatic cancer. There's no hope. Becky is going to die. Now the question is, how do we make the last few months of her life the best that she's ever You can't keep this from Becky indefinitely. Why did it have to be Becky? Why couldn't it be me? She's the one with the, the baby and the love affair and the great future. We're all gonna die. It's just Becky's time. It's too soon. It's always too soon. Well, if she has to die, then let it be like the way she left it. With that smile and that positive attitude. I would do anything to give her that. I think what you're going to try and do is, to say the least, overwhelming, and I'm not sure you're going to be able to pull it off. But I'll tell you that Becky is very, very fortunate to have someone like you who cares so deeply. I admire you for that, Amber. 
And I respect you for what you're going to try and do. So there's another way of having a baby without finding a man? Yes. Taylor, I already told you I'm not interested in adoption. No, no, Morgan, have you considered the possibility of artificial insemination? No, actually, I hadn't. But where do I get the sperm? I still need a man. There are certified sperm banks all over the country. You can find a list on the internet. All right, so tell me about these sperm banks. How do they work? Well, first, you have to be working with a doctor. You can't just walk in off the street and say, hey, I want to get impregnated. All right, Dr. Forrester. <laughs> Assume I'm working with a doctor. I mean, what, what do I do next? Well, um, each sperm bank has a donor profile catalog, and you can check it out. It's a detailed description of the men who have donated the sperm. I mean, you can practically pick and choose the kind of qualities you'd like to have in your own child. Is it safe? No, Morgan, I'm talking about a certified sperm bank. They have a very stringent testing process. They screen for HIV, hepatitis, and every other sexually transmitted disease. Oh, so we just go to the sperm bank and we look through the catalog and we pick out a donor. No, Morgan, Morgan, you know, it's not quite that simple. No, I'm sure it's not. No, I'm, I'm just trying to tell you that it's something that you have to think through very carefully. I mean, you have to remember, you'd be raising this child without a father. That's a very important decision. I told you, if I could find a father, I would. Well, I still believe that the right man is out there. I really do. And I'd be willing to help you find him. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how long we've been talking. <laughs> I didn't even realize I'm supposed to be somewhere. I've got to go, all right? Listen, will you keep me in mind and talk to me about this again? Yeah. Oh, yes, Taylor. The right man is definitely out there. But unfortunately, he's married to you. There. Just you and me tonight, Thorne. I am not even going to think about it. Think about anybody else. Hello? Hey, hon, it's me. No, um, I'm not on my way home. Look, Macy, I've got a ton of work to do here, and I really, I really need to get it finished by tonight. How long are you gonna be? Uh, it's gonna be a while. I see. Are you working alone? No, Brooke's helping me. Listen, I need to get back to work. Um, keep the duck warm for me, okay? Yeah, sure. I'm sorry, Macy. I'll get there as soon as I can. I love you. Thorn. <laughs>